right guys so we're gonna go driving in the Humvee heading out to do some very special work today did you bring those 1.5s oh So, look at here. It is so grown up since I've been here last that you can't even see that Ford pickup in there. Oh, somebody's been uh, either stealing parts off that Ford truck or uh, trying to get it running. Can't see the Marmon anymore either. Alright guys, so... Uh, pulling in. Boy, that's funny. Well, well, well. Ain't that special. Hey, what's up, guys? Man, gorgeous day out today. Check that sky out. Is that beautiful? So, whew, it is hot. I am already sweating. And we're out here in my favorite spot. And I'm standing here in front of this gorgeous piece of machinery man just look at it and uh today we're gonna pop the hood on this thing check the motor out take a peek on the inside and see if it'll crank man doesn't that sound like fun let's get started what we have here is a western star now a lot of you guys noticed this truck sitting in the background when i got a hold of franny and uh it's currently not for sale 
but we are going to see if it'll start. Been sitting here a long time. Uh, you see the amount of stuff that's built up on it, and uh, we're going to take a closer look. But I just want you to notice one thing: that this is the only truck on the property that has an absolutely perfect bumper, and I think that's why the thing's not for sale. I think if the bumper was smashed up, the guy'd really want to sell it. But uh, let's get this hood open and get a peek at what's on, underneath there. All right, well, it looks like it's been popped and it's sitting on an angle like Franny was, so it won't close all the way. Let's just see if we can get this hood open and see what's underneath. Ooh, it's heavy. You gotta throw my butt into it a little bit. One thing I noticed that's pretty cool about it is the grill is separate from the hood. And, uh, that makes it nice because then when you got to do any work on the grill or the surround, you can just stand in the hole. Well, hmm. 3406, my nemesis. You guys remember that uh, the last few of these that I've had my hands on haven't really worked out that great. Um, has a fuel filter. All the fuel lines are on it. It has been sitting a little while by the looks of the belts and the spider webs. Time unit's on it. Let's walk around the other side, see if anything's missing. Uh, doesn't look like anything's missing. Man, this thing is covered up with growth. It has been a while since we've been out here. Let's pull this dipstick tube. It's on the full mark. The oil smells a little bit fuely. Um, it is thin. It is lubricious. No, uh, no real metal on there. Yep, she's got a little bit of fuel in it. Um, so this ought to be exciting. Doesn't look like anything's missing. Uh, we'll pop that air box open and check the turbo out. We'll check the water and we'll get a peek inside. Yep, definitely got a little diesel fuel in it. All right, let's go and open a door on this unit. See if we got a key. As soon as I'm done doing the walk around, we're gonna pop up here. Give this cooling system a little look. Well, she's dry, but you know, the thing about the cooling systems on these trucks, they get an expansion tank on top of the radiator. And so, depending on temperature outside and how long it's been sitting here, it could very well be just down below the level we can see. Um, okay, this is a 3406B, 317 kilowatts, which uh, equates to 425 horsepower. Western Star horns. I'm lights on the roof looking pretty horrid. Uh, let's keep going. All right. Okay, a couple little critters jumped out. Exhaust is uh, not rusted through. Um, let's see. Take a peek up there, no surprises. Get a look inside. Oh boy. Sleeper boot looks good. I'm going to jump up in the seat. Looks like I've got a little bird's nest up there and a bunch of shell debris. So at some point in time, this thing was sitting around with, uh, with, uh, 
you know, birds in it and a door open or something. Okay, so Hamiltonville Farm secret is you look at the uh, volts. And if it goes up to 26, it's 24. If it goes up to 16, it's 12. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily a thing because uh, most of the trucks that are 24 volt are only 24 volt start and they're still 12 volt uh, systems. But okay, we don't have any key. We do have access to the back of the ignition. So I should be able to just clip on a a jumper uh, engine brake right here looks like it's got a 13 speed whoa wow did you see that this thing was sitting on the transmission this whole time nice shifter it, it feels really good transmissions probably not wore out what do we got on here for miles Well, shows 684,000 miles, and uh, I want to believe that that's actual mileage, because if you look at, I think it was just got out from under me. Um, did it come out? Okay, we're going to step out then, because he's probably nesting under there. Uh, if you look at the brake pedal, come over here closer and look at the brake pedal and the gas pedal. So if you look at those, can you get in there to where you can see them? Uh, th there's not a whole lot of wear on either one of those. And usually after a million miles, uh, one of the others worn off. So that's a good sign. This could be a 600,000 mile truck. Um, looking back over here at the battery box. This is uh, the ground. And those are probably one of each. So we'll have to we'll have to dig around there and see what happens. We know this one's a ground because it goes right to the frame, but one of these is probably um, positive, and the other one is ground. Uh, might be easy enough to see. Not too much vegetation growing in over here, which is cool. So I'll be able to slip under there probably. This truck's got a huge wheelbase it's got a big sleeper uh, nice big bunk um, headache rack 22 fives nope low pro 24 fives there's some damage on the back uh, they crashed that spring perch probably just pushing it in here with a with a loader or something uh, I remember the guy told me about it but uh, it's not a bad looking ride might might try and get my hands on it we'll have to see he's uh, not real receptive to my charms but uh, we'll see what happens so anyways let's uh let me get this thing uh, rigged up and get my tent out here so Jessica has a place to go. Don't sting me on the face. You can go back in your house in a second. Uh, we'll set up the tent and uh, see how it goes. We'll be back. Huh? You gotta talk to this camera too. Oh. I've been recording this whole time and you're just like. So, so anyways, guys, uh, you know, when I got my POV camera on, uh, I tend to forget there's another one and Jessica's here with me and she's. Uh, She's recording, so this is a pretty nice truck. Um, it's a pretty nice bunch of bugs, but it's a pretty nice truck. And uh, it's got a 3406 B model, 425. Uh, it's on the valve cover, so pretty easy to tell the difference. And uh, well, we're gonna see if we can't get it running. So we're gonna get things set up, get the tent set up so Jessica's not cooking out here, and uh, we'll get back with you. So, uh, four batteries, three new ones, and one that tested 12.5 after sitting for a month. So, four good batteries. A whole bunch of cables. 
some new, some old. That should be enough to make this old girl sing off if it's gonna. The marine and sweat. It's super hot out. Good thing there's a little bit of shade on this side of the tractor. Every once in a while there's a breeze. Yeah. Got Jessica running the other camera. Me running the POV cam. Soaking it with water. All right, so whew, we're gonna take this fuel filter down. We're gonna jump off that ignition. Now we gotta be super careful with this filter because it's the only one we have. Problem is, I can't bite it. So that's no good. I don't have Chuck to help me to hand it. I don't have the right filter, right size filter wrench, which, you know, it's not real surprising because, uh, well, it's stink. So what we're gonna try and do. I'm gonna try and just manhandle it off of there. You can do it. See? Yeah. Good job. Let's see what we got. Uh, Now we gotta see if I'm capable of jumping this ignition. We'll have to check the fuses too, because when I hook the battery up, a little spark. You, you recording? Oh yeah. Okay, get over there. <laughs> all right guys, so, all right guys, so here's the deal. Um, I got the ignition jumped off. I got voltage to the starter, it spins over good. So now we're just gonna see if we can get it to start. And uh, if it won't start on its own fuel, we'll try a little bit of mine. But uh, I got a feeling this thing will start. So, uh, Hopefully it'll shut off, you know, there is always that. Uh, caterpillars don't tend to run away, so we should be fine. Let me see what I got here. Now see that's the way a that's the way a starter is supposed to spin. I don't want to use ether on this truck. You know it's caterpillar, it'll start. Come on. Houdini!
Okay, so it's gonna be it's gonna be obstinate, but I have something to fix that with. Wheeler over. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> off some fuel instead of ether. Sounded pretty good. That's uh, unfortunate for my wallet. This thing, this thing, that line pulled good. It's got a better feet in. We give me the light. Okay. Well, it wants to. This wasp wants me to get stung too. Yep. Let me pump this fuel a little bit. Well, it's definitely, definitely building oil pressure or fuel pressure. The uh, oil pressure gauge in there, you want to watch it next time you spin it and see if it's making oil pressure? All right, try it. Okay, I'm gonna, man, I just don't think the, okay, you see the blue wire that goes to the top one? See how I got two, uh, yeah. Take that on and off uh, of that one and let's see if the fuel solenoid opens and closes. Uh, you ready? Yeah, take it off. Okay, and then just touch it on and off. Yep. Keep going, bing, 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 bing. Okay, plug it back in. The fuel solenoid's opening, I just think the rack is stuck and that that would suck a little. Uh, we could take this cover off and uh, see, but let's uh, let's do something more fun. Let's, let's see if it'll, if it'll start. Crank on a little bit. Not too much, like 10 seconds. Okay. Let me give her a little spritz. Just a little. All right, go ahead. Yeah, it's definitely not. It's definitely not gonna run on its own fuel without that rack working. Let me uh, let me take that cover off and see if I can get that rack to snap free in there. I don't know if you can see in there, but we're gonna take this little cover off. And uh, supposedly underneath there is, you can see the rack. When I say rack, it's just a lever that goes in and out of that pump right there, this pump, and it opens and closes the, uh, it's kind of like on a, on a screw and as you push the the throttle down it uh, moves the rack in there and it rotates on the uh, injector pump and allows more fuel to go through and uh, yeah it's stuck I can feel it trying to pull it back. Oh, look at that. Loose connection on that solenoid. Is it, is it tightening? Oh, that nut's not the right size. Okay. So it's not. Let me push that down. Let 
Yeah, it's definitely not moving like it should. Uh, oh man, look how smart I am. You see that bar in there? Yeah. Now watch that bar. When you trip this, yeah, it's, it's supposed to pull it back. Yeah, it's better than moving. Yeah, and I don't know, I don't know how much it's supposed to come back because, like I said, I've heard about it, but I've never done it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get a hold of it. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. He wasn't moving that far. Okay, spin this thing over. I'll hold this wire on the shut off. All right, try it. Okay, so it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, so I don't think that's a problem. When, as it started, you know, that, that rack started rolling open like it's supposed to. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So I'm gonna cover that back up, keep crap out of there, and then we're gonna go back to the fuel filter. And uh, I brought fuel. Um, so I might come in right here and uh, draw fuel out of my tank. Maybe, maybe this is full of water, you know, could be anything. So put this back on and then we'll give her a look get her running on some clean fuel but I you know I am gonna say I'm gonna call it ahead of time that this motor's good and, uh, I'm pretty sure this one is and it'll run like I said I think the only thing was wrong with this was the damage it done dragging it out right and I was looking at that it's not that bad um, take that airbag off heat and straighten that bottom mount and put a new airbag on it I think it'd be fine I didn't see like any damage to anything that has a bushing or anything like that but I mean we'll, we'll look at it. I get a bunch of people that have asked about this truck online now uh, that doesn't mean anybody has any money yeah. but if you come up with a, a price that you want to sell it for um, I'll put it out there and see. I would really like to have it, but the problem is I have eight trucks on about half an acre, and uh, I don't have any room for any more trucks. So I really can't buy any more right now. And I want the the Ford cab over and one of the Marmon cam cab overs and. Uh, So, you know this this would be cool to have. This is a nice truck, but it's not a it's not a have to have. Yeah, I mean I did, I did like this, and you just don't turn with shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I was noticing that it's got a huge wheelbase. Yeah. Like, like even you know, conventionals have a nice wheelbase, but this one you could put another 150 gallon fuel cell on it, mm -hmm. and still have room for batteries. Uh, yeah, I don't need those anymore. I need this. That was the best pulling truck I'd ever drove for a long time. Well, it's got the, uh, it's got the original stickers on the top. It's 425. Yeah, it's 425. Yep. Yep. That's what was in it, too. And I don't know if it's just the way it's set. Every time it's set up, it just pulled real good. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it runs about 80-something miles on there. But it would just this time run 80-something miles. Right. Man, it sure would be nice if it would cloud over and blow some wind. Okay, so why would a guy bring an 8 to a 10 adapter but not a 10 to a 10 adapter? Because that just would make sense to have one of those. Dang it. I got a eight to an eight. I got an eight to a ten, but I don't have a ten to a ten, and that's uh, that's rude. Uh, 
so that has to go here, right? Yeah, make yourself at home. Boy, why has everything got to be hidden on this thing? Come on now. Getting fuel. It's going away, ain't running. Babe, come hold this. Ouch. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is not a very comfortable position to be in. What do you mean that's not comfortable? Well, you know. Come on now, this is ridiculous. Just go on there. I got it. We got it. We got it. I, mean, I got it. I got it. I'm the boss. Well, well, well. Yeah, well, well. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> I get that lucky once in a while. Okay, so. This thing's pumping good, so I don't know what the deal is. Oh man. Dang it. Well. Try and crank it. Ready? Yep. Man, that's awesome. guys well well man that thing runs good huh okay break time hey guys man I'm roasting out here it's a scorcher today anyways let me uh let me do something right quick October of 88. All right, guys. Man, success. Uh, when, I, when I first opened the hood on this, 
I kind of thought, well, you know, it should start. There's a lot of, a lot of webs and a lot of dirt and debris and stuff. Uh, took the fuel filter off, full of water and black soot. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure. Uh, we dumped that out. I didn't bring a new filter because, well, I don't have any in stock. So I filled the filter up with some diesel and some transmission oil. Uh, checked the fuel in the tank and it was, you know, at about a foot in there. So I thought, oh, it should start. Um, hooked up the batteries, four brand new batteries. This thing turned over like faster than it was idling and uh, wouldn't start, wouldn't start. Sprayed her with a little bit of uh, laughing gas. Wah! Fired up, blew all sorts of crap all over everything and then died. So I knew we were having problems with fuel delivery. Uh, checked to make sure that the rack and the pump was working. It was the, um, the uh, fuel solenoid. Uh, the wire that was on there had the wrong size nut, so the wire was just setting on there. So it wasn't getting a good uh, connection. We fixed that. Tried again, same problem. Could get it on ether, but it wouldn't draw fuel. So I had brought a can with me and uh, brought a length of hose. We disconnected the hose from the truck. Went right from my can into the bottom of the fuel pump. Turned over 10 revs and uh, was running, idling. Uh, carried 50 pounds of oil pressure. Uh, it's a good truck. Um, I'm going to try and get my hands on it. Uh, but uh, my guy's just not receptive to my charms right now. Uh, I am going to nail him down on a price on this truck. I don't, I don't need this truck. I'd like to have it, but I don't need it. So I may have it for sale. So if you guys are serious, uh, 1988 uh, Western Star. Interior is nice. It's, it is a baby blue interior, which, you know, isn't my choice. It would be really cool if they had a white or a, a silver charcoal. But uh, for now... This truck's finished. We appreciate you coming by. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And also, don't forget, jamespretty.shop. It's open. We got merch. Go check it out. jamespretty.shop. 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 We'll see you.